Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the rings. Uh, I'm going to start with the ring end gap. So now we're ready to put the rings on the piston. And then we'll put the piston on the, uh, on the bike. This is the base gasket. I'm just so now we're gonna be putting on the cylinder. Make sure you switch over your dowel sleeve or your notch pin. Um, so now we're gonna put the jug on the bike. Uh, we're gonna do the cam chain guide later. We'll do that after we put the thing on. And we don't need to do the uh, the timing chain right now. We'll do it after. Cause some people like to use a wire or try to rig it up or something. But we can just drop it right down through. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lube up the cylinder walls with the uh, engine oil. Got the cylinder on. Next up is you want to get the cam guide, the chain guide, and there's like a little levet right here. So make sure that this is the side double. So you put that in. Make sure it goes into this groove. In the groove right here. So you can drop it right down in here. But on the when we put on the head, we'll have to rig it up. So I'm gonna try to shit. I'm gonna try to get it in this in these hinges. This gears. you got the dowel sleeve transferred over and then you have to put in the cam chain tensioner. Now I'm going to be putting on the head with the head gasket with the cam chain guide tensioner and uh, the dowel sleeves. Cylinder bolts, like the lower one too. So here's the tricky part: is uh, you can't get the cam on the chain without removing the sprocket from the cam. So another very important step is I'm going to be uh, using Lucas Oil assembly loop on the cam, the cam journals, and you need to make sure you get this C clip. So I'll put lube right in here on the cam journals when the clip goes in right there. So they tell you to put the cam chain on first and then put on the stator or the starter gear and then the stator. But I'm gonna do it differently because if the cam chain falls down while you're putting the cylinder on, you have to take that uh, stator off again, so that's gonna be a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna do that later when I need to set it at TDC. So I'm gonna drop the cam in the lower of the container. Make sure it fits in the C clip.
There's his TDC as it gets. Cams are down. So next up, is looking for this hash mark right here. I'm gonna put that on. And then we're going to have to put on the uh, stator cover. And we'll have to look through that hole. And if that uh, line is through that hole right here, you can see the arrow. Then we're at TDC and we're good to go. We're ready to rock and roll. So now we got to put on the clip on the on the camshaft sprocket and bend up the tabs. I'm reusing this one. Calls for Loctite on these bolts. Don't got the the red one. Got the blue one. Whatever. Then we'll tighten up the uh, the stator of the flywheel. Make make sure we got the starter gear in. Close up the stator cover, and then put it on the head. Check the valves, and then we're done. Spins this gear, more so spins the, the stator and the flywheel. Chain cover, make sure you put it on the, uh, the stator bolts. and then there's usually like a certain pattern but I'm just going to do a crisscross now we're going to be popping in the cam chain tensor and the gasket you got the cam chain tensioner you want to take out the spring So here's the valve clearance. Um, have all that done. We have seat, fuel tank, plastic, spark plug, inspection cap, generator cap, rotor cap. Now here we're at TDC, so that's already done. So everything's done. Now it says the valve clearance specification is the same for both intake and exhaust valves. So it gives a, a range of 0 0.08 to 0 0.13 millimeters. I'm going to go on the high side and do the 0 .3, 0 0.13 with all of them. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to loosen them up all the way. So I already got this one bent. So I'm going to loosen these up all the way. You can't really even see it. So I'm going to loosen them up all the way. And then I'm going to tighten them down to the specs so I know. I'm going to do the high side. So it said 0 0.08 to 0 0.13 millimeters put your uh, valve cover inspection cap back on next up is the head stay or the motor mount on the top make sure we get the cover caps on 
Make sure it's at PDC too. Put back the exhaust pipe. And lastly, the carburetor. I just put the carb back in. I'm going to be putting on the gas tank, the battery, oil filter, spark plug. Uh, if it's a water cooled bike, you're going to need to put back the radiator, the oil filter, and the spark plug, Suzuki spark plug. Got the gas tank back in. Now it's my favorite part oil filter, Suzuki. And a special Suzuki spark plug right here. OEM. And the Suzuki DR200 service manual. Here is the engine oil procedure. And here's the whole procedure. And here's where I'm at. Now I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with 1200 milliliters. This one says overhaul engine. I don't know how much oil I wiped out, but I did pour gas in there, so I'm gonna. Do the twelve hundred or the thirteen hundred? There's a thousand, or there's five hundred. So here's the final moment. Uh, with any rebuild, you just never know. So it either runs or it doesn't run. There's only two options. For this application, I'm going to set the fuel petcock to prime 